I want you to tell me the very first things that you see or the very first impressions that you have as you now begin to understand where you are and what is happening around you. So, um, I don't know if what I'm seeing is like a metaphor, like a visual metaphor, because I'm in this forest of enormous evergreen trees and it's like really dense. It's pretty dark. Um, like not a light, a lot of light can filter through. And what I'm seeing is this like golden glowing bubble that's actually fairly small that's just nestled in like to this mossy spot and why I thought maybe it was a metaphor is I, I feel like I could be pulled into it and then I'm in this huge world that is the pixie world but it's like this realm looks so small which is different than I've seen it before <laughs> um and it's weird to be seeing it all from the outside, but it's like a bubble, like a, a half bubble, just surrounding it on the forest floor. Like a dome? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So now you are observing outside of this bubble, but you can mm -hmm. see it. And it looks small, you know, it would be like maybe waist height if, if I was a human standing. Mm-hmm. Is this bubble transparent? Is you can see through? It is transparent and I can see through it, but it's somewhat hazy. It's sort of like looking through a bubble, mm -hmm. like an actual soap bubble. Um, and it's just very bright, which is like a stark contrast to this dark forest around it. Like it looks like dusk in the forest. Like there's lots of like the tree trunks I can't see a lot of the color it just looks like dark brown or black and then there's like filtering blue light but then inside this bubble everything is so bright and and golden it's as though light and energy is emanating from the bubble but when I look at the bubble it just looks like a golden bubble not like I'm seeing uh, a lot of light that it's um, shedding on the surroundings would you like to dive in? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and do that and, and tell me what happens. I feel like things are incredibly clear, yet I feel like I'm in, like there's a counter or something in front of me. But inside, the forest inside, it's like, it looks like a big forest. <laughs> Uh, like it's somehow, maybe it is the gateway into the pixie realm. I don't know. Um, but it doesn't feel like I'm in a bubble when I'm inside. I don't, I don't see the outer world of bigger trees or anything. And there's a lot of, oh, it feels so amazing. It's, um, there's just so much like, light and energy and vibrance um like there's there's moss and everything it's almost like everything that i can see is more more defined like i'm seeing the minutia that maybe i don't normally see in the world because everything is highlighted in its essence it's a forest of tall trees and they are mostly evergreen trees again, though not exclusively. And it feels like just a very hydrated, like there's moss and ferns and fallen trees. And there's a whole world of pixies. And as they travel around, they look like, like lights, like little golden lights. And as I, the light is coming from their heart, like as a central point that it emanates from. Yeah, and I'm, I mean, I'm one of them too. They can fly. They spend more of their time flying, though they can walk too, but it's really just like 
as something else to do. You say you feel like you're also one of them? Mm-hmm. So are you now with a group of them or are you... Alone? I'm not. Um, I feel like I'm just... You know, there are other pixies around, but I'm just sort of watching. Like, none, no one, there's not a group of anyone really close together at the moment. So how would you describe yourself? You said, like, um, a light. Do you see any any kind of form or anything more? Um, yeah, I have, like, a human form. Although very small, like all of the features are very tiny. On Earth, it wouldn't be considered physical. It's like semi-physical. Like it is physical, but it's more like light, mm. like a light body maybe, or like somewhere in between. It's a lot less physical than the human form. Mm. And I have wings. And... When I look at them up close, they're um, they're made of light, but they also are sort of semi-physical. And the, there's there are veinations in them that look bright, bright golden. And I see four wings. And when you look at them really close, it's like that rainbow light. When you see, um, like if you were to look at it piece of your hair in the sunlight and it's just all rainbows um, it's like it's like rainbow stripes but so so minute that it just sort of looks like a rainbowy film but they are light and they're emanating light like mm. sort of a whitish goldeny light mm. um, like that the edges of the wings are not very well defined because it just sort of trails off into light light energy. I see. Um, and when I look at my body, it's sort of the same. I can feel myself when I touch myself as being physical, but it's when you look at me visually, like if you were to look at my arm, my skin, well, it sort of looks like you know it has a color tone when I look up more closely it also is like this rainbowy light okay so if I understand your description would it be accurate to say that um, it feels like their bodies they don't have like a very sharp edge to it yeah yeah it, it like it blends into this light it's mm. you know this is very interesting what you say I love it because when I meditate, I feel as the physical limits of my body are kind of disappearing in a way, as if they're fading, the edges are fading out. So you reminded it's, me very much of what you're describing. Here. Yes, it's very much the same. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And how big would you say that the wings are compared to the body? All the ones I'm seeing, they're not huge. I would say if I were to hold my arms out to the sides, they would be just a bit bigger than that, like a bit longer. Only the wings that I'm seeing are going up and down. They look a little like dragonfly wings, but they don't go out to the sides. How about the skin? Like you would just want to know more about it or? Yeah, I'm curious about the color or the texture. So the skin, when I look at my own arm, it's sort of like a peachy color, but it almost looks translucent. Hollow is not the right word, but translucent, like, that, like there's so much light there in the body and it's not so solid physical and so I'm trying to think of what I could relate it to and I can't I can't really come up with um, something to liken it to maybe the closest thing that I can imagine is like a baby mouse that doesn't have hair yet although 
the mouse is a lot more dense and physical than this. Mm -hmm. This is just like very soft and light. And then like I said, when I look up really close, I think my entire being is just the, these little stripes of this rainbow light. But from a bit more of a distance, you can see more of a form and more um, coloration. My face has pointier features, like more um, sort of chiseled cheekbones and chin and point, a more pointy nose and more definition of like the bony orbit around my eye. Big eyes. What color do you see in the eyes? I just see them being dark. Okay. They do have pupils. They look like they have color, but I can't, it's, I would say they look brown and like flowy, curly, not curly, wavy hair, mm. but sort of wispy. Are you, do you feel like you are female or male? I feel you female. Make, okay, so you could make that, that distinction mm -hmm. from your energy? Yes. Yep. And I see others that have that, like, I see others that are more male embodied and others that are more female embodied as well. Do you see any clothing on your body? I do. It looks a bit creative. <laughs> like, um, you know, like little tatters of, of things. <laughs> like... Like patchwork, uh, you mean? Um, it's not like patchwork. No, it's like like points of interest that I loved or found around, like the curl of a of a dried fern. Um, it's that's like on my skirt. It's like elements from nature that are made into something like clothing but it's it feels like it's more for for joy for artistic expression uh, like it's an an art form and, and like we pick up little bits of things that tickle us like that make us happy and and just sort of sport them or wear them because we like it because we enjoy it more than that we need it it's I I get the sense that we're very creative and artful and it looks like like when I look around our home like things are put together with intention there's not a lot of extra anything everything is made of natural materials and we don't want for anything when we need something it's available mm -hmm. but we also are not like hoarding things or um although <laughs> as i say that i'm looking around and there are fairies that have made or uh, pixies and it's funny that i said fairies but there are pixie beings that have made collections of things but it also is is more of an art form and it's not within the home it's like collecting points of interest that others can come to enjoy in a place or add to like there's so much joy and laughter and everything just feels so joyful and there's it feels like there's a deep sense of purpose would you like to tell me more about that yeah, I'm just trying to feel it out. We each have different purposes within our realm, but overall, the purpose of our being, like as a pixie, is to watch out for and protect a natural area. And I feel like protect is kind of not exactly the right word, but we do, there's a very, despite our small size, like maybe we're two and a half inches tall, 
but despite that there's a very um tall like big powerful presence of who we are that isn't adequately embodied in our small size and it's more like that essence the big essence of who we are we're guardians of these natural areas that tend to be wooded but then within that we all have our jobs we're looking out for some of us for looking out for other creatures in the natural world for plants helping each other like there are also maybe what humans would call um, medics or doctors or something and within your group you mean mm -hmm. like there are some that have that like you know propensity for wanting to help other pixies and animals heal So you work with animals too? You help the animals too? Mm -hmm. Animals, plants, and other beings of our own species. I'm trying to see if... And there are other um, species that we help too, like... <laughs> what's popping into my head is goblins, but I don't really know what goblins are in particular. But like, there are other elemental creatures that we help as well when they need it although it's not as frequent that we're interacting with them um i get the sense that the pixie realm is sort of further afoot it's not like um, sort of more secluded and further away from like the activities of humans for example mm. Do you think um, that humans can see you? It's a rare human that could see us. Mm. Uh, but it's not impossible. And there have been some. There have been times when it was much easier for humans to see us. Um, okay. Because they had... I'm uh, <laughs> being shown this, this like lotus bloom in their heart. Like... They were more heart-centered and open. Like I'm being shown that right now, uh, many humans have very, like I'm being shown this box in their head, like very closed off minds, mm -hmm. uh, as in they're not open to any possibility or they have an idea of what is and what isn't. And that limits their ability to perceive what they might not otherwise easily connect with or see. So you said that the, you saw a lot of, in the heart, so people who are heart-centered are more mm -hmm. able to, to, to see you, to connect with you, to yes. tap into and your I, frequency. And those people also tended to be more connected to the light and like lighter vibrations and all possibilities mm. and it there there have been times on the earth where that was more common than it has been in the recent millennia centuries I see. how about animals can animals perceive you yes Okay, so animals are connected to their hearts. Yes. Mm -hmm. In which dimension would you would you say that uh, do you occupy? Are you above the third dimension? Um, fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh. Although where I'm seeing right now is like in between the fourth and fifth like that seems to be where most of the focus is because it's making a bigger impact on helping to raise the vibration of the planet what do you mean so these realms exist 
um, between many dimensional vibrations, although it feels like the pixie realm is among, adds, adds to the efforts of the many inter-vibrational beings that are helping to um, elevate the earth at this time. And so there's more focus on the fourth and fifth dimensions of the pixies at this time than the sixth and seventh because it's like where all the pixies want to be because they want to be able to be a part of this um, I'll say ascension because it's a human term but it's like a they want to be a part of this raising of the, the vibration and helping to helping the planet and the creatures and the humans all work to heal and raise the frequency. Like, I feel like words are so insufficient for what what's going on, but... You're doing great. Um, and I, I have so many questions. <laughs> so you said that um, you are helping... Um, humanity in our in a shift in consciousness mm -hmm. how, how are you assisting so because we don't actually interface with humans hardly ever these days not very often except in these sorts of states um, that we're doing in this session right now we're helping to anchor this higher energy on the planet which both changes, it raises the energy of the whole, but it also, um, it like helps to hold or create this new template for possibility that humans are starting to step up into now at this, at this junction where there's, starting to let go of the box thinking and become more open to higher realms of possibility and so part of what these these pixie um, realms are doing is helping to hold this energy which um, connects to people's hearts because there are people all across the planet I'm being shown that have this connection from uh, you know on a soul level with the pixie realms and whether or not they are aware of that or awake to it as a possibility just by them being here um, on the earth it is I'm being shown it's like in these people that are um, not aware of any of this it's it's like little tingles of light around their heart are constantly being activated which helps to well awaken them to higher realms of possibility and as they go through that process it's like a people say a domino effect but it, you know as they start to wake up then that energy starts to raise and then others connected to them get those little light tingles around their heart and their energy so it's like everyone's part of this process together and even though the pixies don't physically interface with humans very often their energy is no less important in the whole process of the planetary shift and uh, you said that um, you you have also some individual missions uh, besides the the main purpose of assisting Gaia at this time and, and humanity. Would you like to tell us about your your own individual mission at this time? My mission is um, as a healer, and so I work with many plant medicines 
And there's a very sacred relationship that we have with the plants. Um, This purpose was inspired by someone that I love that I studied under. And when she was ready to leave the pixie realm. When you say see, what do you mean? Uh, it's like I had a, um, like I tutored under her. Like um, she taught me what I know about the plants as a healer. And now I've taken on that role in our in our little village mm-hmm. and like she taught me the sacredness of our connection with the plants and communication with them and how to gather things in a loving way where the plants are gifting them instead of them being taken and how to prepare them and it's uh You know, it's like a lot of poultices and uh, teas and wraps, (laughs) like wrapping plants around um, injured parts of the body. Um, We use water, but it's sacred water from, it's like a waterfall and and there are springs there. And that water is very healing. So like every facet of what we use to help others has so much tingly energy. Like it's so high vibrational. And there's so much intention with each thing. And so much honor and respect um, given to the different aspects that we're using in healing like to the water to the plants and and so when we're helping something that or someone that's injured to heal it's like very ceremonial and there's so much love and respect given to each aspect um and so much gratitude and it's just such a beautiful it's really amazing to feel this this energy such a beautiful experience to witness and when something needs my help I just know like I know where I need to go and I know when I need to be there so you help your own people and Mm -hmm. you said you're also helping animals yeah Would you like to talk to us a little bit about that? Well, it's like the same. Like if, like I see this mouse that hurt her foot, and we, it's the same. We're doing the same thing, and it feels like we can communicate with each other. So it must be. It feels like it's all just knowing. Uh, It doesn't feel like. Like, we know we're different creatures, but it doesn't feel like we're different or separate. And, like, the mouse can meet me in the same way. Like, she's showing up in an open-hearted way, and I'm here helping her, like, wrapping her foot with these herbs. So she, the way that we communicate, it feels like we're the same, like we're old friends even though I might not know her directly mm. I understand do you nice we drink water ah uh, right we, we drink nectar and sap what is this sap like from a tree uh, like the water that flows inside a tree uh-huh. that's a little bit sweet Uh, It's like what maple syrup is boiled down from. Okay. And I see these like watery bulbs of nectar from flowers that we eat. And very occasionally it looks like the juice from fruits, but not very often. 
What's um, your favorite fruit? I just see peaches. Mm. And I see us drinking like the dew drops on the tips of ferns, the tips of leaves. And we gather water from the sacred sites. Although it's more used for healing, it also carries with it uh, life force energy when healing is needed. And we drink it sometimes, although more often we're drinking dew drops, it looks like. Mm -hmm. How long do you live? Hundreds of human years. Okay. Do you choose when to die, when to leave that, that yes. the body that you occupy? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what happens after? If you would were to decide uh, to leave this body, do you know where you you would go? Mm -hmm. I see this beautiful um, sort of ceremonial passing I'm seeing this woman who taught me about healing surrounded by others that love her and we sort of come and go spending time with her this woman is a pixie or mm -hmm. she's a pixie we share it feels like I'm helping her to breathe her last breaths and then I'm going with her. Like it feels like we're together, although we're not still embodied. So I'm, I'm going with her where she meets other spirits that she's been close with and gives me a hug and says that she is, is ready to go. And then I come back to my body. It's almost like I'm helping her transition and making sure she goes to the next place, you know, with somebody that she knows and loves that is still anchored physically. So it, it doesn't seem very different than other times I've seen this. Like she's met by others she knows and loves and trusts and becomes part of the light again. Do you feel like you have individual souls. Hmm. Yes, but they're all like f fragments of the same. You know, there's a lot of, there's, we are individually embodied, but there's so much sense of unity. Like we can easily tune into each other mm. or tune out of each other from anywhere. Mm. So we don't need to travel in order to see what's going on somewhere or to communicate with each other. Like we can easily communicate with each other from very vastly different physical places as though we were sitting in the same room together. And we can travel and embody into those places as well. So like we can say I can have a conversation with my friend who's very far away, but if I need them to be here with me they'll just embody here so it's like a I don't know how to describe that it's like a part of them it's like their essence is there to have a conversation with you or whatnot but then they can physically embody into that essence so there's maybe different levels of physicality but we can communicate regardless of that what you described uh, in human terms, we we call something like a teleportation. Yeah, and like it's just intention. By location. Right. Yes, it's like by location, except um, then you can actually teleport if you want or need to. Mm. You just don't necessarily need to do that always. I think it, it feels like it takes more energy to do that, mm. which is why you would choose to bilocate like sort of have your your essence be there talking with someone without physically joining them always yeah so you're able to manipulate matter you're able to 
dematerialize your physical body even if it's yeah that of course it's it's light and i guess that is what's happening it just doesn't like it sounds funny to hear you say it but yes like uh, it just from this perspective it just feels like right. it's all intention and so if we want to communicate with someone we're thinking about we show up there but it doesn't mean we have to leave where we are yeah are you aware that you're speaking through a, a human yes i wonder um, if there is a specific reason why you uh, chose to come through hana today do you have any connection with her or if not what was the reason why you wanted to be the spokesman for your species well hana has been embodied into pixie lifetimes many times before and has a very strong connection with us and is she aware of it yes and we wanted to it feels like me being the spokesman for our species is really just cuz i'm happy to step up and do it for the expansion and learning of humanity and whoever is interested and open hearted enough to hear and want to explore it further It's really just um helping to strengthen these light connections between us to further the process of human ascension and planetary ascension for all beings. I'm very grateful that you chose to do this for us. We are grateful too. Have you ever spoken again in this way with a with a human being? A few times we've had sessions similar to this with Hana, although it's not always the same essence that comes through. Mm-hmm. And how is it for you to communicate with a human in this way? It's very joyful. We don't often have this opportunity. but we're enjoying sharing likewise <laughs> would you like to talk to us a little bit about your connection with gaia mm. in the same way that she is your earth mother she is also ours although we would say she's one of ours as elementals we help protect her help to keep her body clean and safe and help to keep her creatures this in the same and our interface with our ability to show up and be part of this shift this planetary shift and the shift for all creatures here on the earth humanity included feels like such a huge blessing in the same way that they say for people um uh, that many souls have lined up to embody onto your planet at this time that it's like winning the lottery when you get to it's the same for our realm because there are pixies and many other places as well not just on earth although um as elementals we have a sort of a fundamental purpose to help the earth and help her hold her resonance um and raise in frequency at this time so you your species also exists on other planets Yes, although they're somewhat different on other planets. What missions do you have on these other planets? Are they similar? Are you also like uh, doing assisting the planet? They're similar. Mm. And uh how long have you been on Earth? We 
would say we've been on earth since before the beginning what do you mean before you you helped create the planet in some way no but we volunteered to help her from her before she was created and from her inception so we've been here throughout the process so you were present uh, during the, the the planet was formed yes you mean you were here energetically and when it when it was an idea do you know what was the initial idea of for the formation of of planet earth you know i'm hearing her is <laughs> it's a birthing place for the gates of gaia i don't even know what that means <laughs> it's a birthing place for the gates of gaia mm -hmm. the gates of gaia there are it's like i'm seeing so much energy i'm just trying to let it coalesce into something that i can explain mm -hmm. take your time and just allow the, the words to flow through you you can even if, if you want you could also use your ability of connecting to gaia herself since you're so connected i see this huge energy like earth was created and in part earth was created for humanity uh to go through this time that we're going through and wow that's that's incredible but it's like you know so much came before yeah so but it's i'm seeing like all of these times you know challenging times and beautiful times and times of rich nature and times of nature being challenged it's like everything all that exists is this now moment in this moment and and so what i'm being shown is that everything was created to bring us to this pinnacle moment right now you know this pinnacle time that we're all going through and that of course there are were other have been other important times and like minutia events that have gone on if you look at the huge timeline of all the things that have happened since earth's creation but but right now what's important is this event that that humanity is transcending and so when you ask the question why was earth created there it just looks very cluttered because <laughs> i'm seeing so many different things but they just keep bringing me back to this you know that it it was created to house this huge shift and when i say to house it's like you know earth is our home and there's this energy that we all are bringing here but it's really the collective of humanity's energy that um has navigated this struggle over time along with the other beings that we love and affect and that love and affect us um whether they're physically embodied or not and so it's really just all about this what we might term a culmination of this shift that we're in right now although it's not actually a culmination because much happens afterwards but right now it feels like this pinnacle energetically of what we have worked towards as a collective and when i say we i'm speaking from the pixie perspective but also from the human perspective because all of it is um you know the all of our energy together is unified as we're all working together from different smaller perspectives to collectively bring forward this shift and you know in the process of that we're helping to release old patterns and 
negative or lower vibrational energies that we've been carrying through our heritage, through ancestral lines, through time and space, like the stories of everything that has ever gone before, all of those things are shifting in the process of this. And it's not small work, it's huge work. And so it feels from the pixie perspective like we're all working on this together even though within our individual lives you know we're just living our lives i'm a healer and i'm working with plants and animals and other you know other beings but it doesn't diminish this larger perspective or unified perspective that we're also all navigating together feels like more of a soul level that that information is coming from then i don't maybe soul's the wrong word because it feels like our collective soul <laughs> like maybe that's an over soul or something i don't know mm -hmm. because when i tune into like the pixie life it's not all that different than the human life i mean yes like what i see and what i do are different but it just feels like here's my life and i'm living with joy but I can see and feel and access so many different levels of information that I, that's, that's what I got. That's incredible. This is just so beautiful and it, it really, really gave me goosebumps. Uh, and it went straight into my heart and it rings, uh, it resonated. Um, <laughs> as if, all these adventures and all these thousands of years are preparing for this time where we are right now because yeah i'm speaking from an individual perspective um my perspective is now from a human being embodied on this planet going through this incredible <laughs> transformation and for sure as i'm focused on this it, for me it feels like huge but uh, to see to hear your perspective that indeed is, is it's really like it is that big indeed um, I, I don't know it's just it just blows my mind and it, the other thing I'm being shown is that you know this time that we're in it's so exciting <laughs> I know with human <laughs> perspective it doesn't always feel that way but it's so exciting and where it's heading you know what comes from navigating this time is so big and bright and beautiful and like it looks like an empty palette it's not that it's not that it doesn't necessarily have a trajectory but it's it's big and beautiful and they don't want me to see any of what's coming because that's part of the miracle of this mm. shift is the, that like open palette of creation. So for you as a species also, as a collective, is also a very exciting moment, right? Yes, hugely exciting. Although I will say that from the pixie perspective, they're more aware of what's going on than the humans are. You mean you can see into the future more clearly? Yes, but they won't show me. Oh, they can't they make an exception? <laughs> Please! <laughs> Please. <laughs> well, no, they won't. That's, that's fine. I mean, I think... Uh, if one connects to their hearts, they know, they know yeah. the answer, they, they... But they're just showing us that it's like so big and bright and beautiful. Like there is nothing, you know, nothing to fear. Yeah. There's, yeah. Yeah. It, it is amazing and wonderful and more phenomenal than anything we can probably perceive at the moment. Um, just so light filled but the specifics are not, are being hidden from me yeah okay but do you do you think that uh, it's possible that Hannah and I we're going to have a taste of this in in our lifetime oh yes 
Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Because it feels like the, the the road is long. I mean, there's it does. So, there's so much to shift and, and rebuild, and and so it's. And that's because you're doing such a beautiful job of being present. Mm. But like with any large task, if you show up and you you're present and you focus on this step, what's in front of you, and you just keep doing that, it's not very long before you look back and see how much, how far you've come. But if you look at all that you have to do, it just seems overwhelming and daunting often. Mm-hmm. So just show up for this one thing and then keep doing that. Just what's in front of you at this moment. Doing your best to really show up with an open heart and with light and love in your heart. And do your best in each moment. And if you feel like looking back, something wasn't your best, don't worry about it. Just let it go. It was your best in the moment, given what you had and the circumstances you had. And just keep showing up with an open heart and doing the same. And you will get there sooner than you realize. Though we recognize that soon is a word that is hard to convey <laughs> the depth of meaning for. Yeah, yeah. What message do you have for humanity at this time? We want you to remember to show up with love in your heart, with trust and a sense of faith and know that as long as you show up, even if you feel like you don't have the energy to do anything, just by holding this love, every time that you're able to hold this sense of trust and let go of whatever fears you may have to the extent that you can, take some deep breaths, spend time in nature, spend time with those that you love in any way that you're able to, even if it's just writing an email or connecting over the phone. But in any way, it's helpful forming those and holding those love connections. Put your feet on the earth. Remember that the earth and the plants and the trees are all here showing up for you too. And so you can love them as well. If you feel that you don't have any other connections in your life, remember that you are surrounded by love at every turn because everything is actually created from this love. And so do any small things that bring you joy and that enable you to connect to this, even if it's just taking a deep breath and being grateful that you can. That energy that you embody in those moments when you're being present, uh, that is a tremendous step forward for the overall energy of the planet and for aiding this shift. You don't have to be anybody other than who you already are. You have everything that you need inside of you already. So just show up and be the light that you are. You're so much more than the stories that you have uh, been telling yourself from this lifetime. You've, you have largely had so many more um, embodiments and adventures and you are a vast wealth of love and information and experience far beyond your years here on earth so just show up and hold the light and the knowing as much as you can and connect with whatever you are able to connect with that can share that energy with you Gaia or or your earth mother is always available for this The trees and plants are always available for this. 
even just with intention, connecting with a bird that you see or a squirrel or any animal, as well as other people, this all helps. So know that you're doing it and we're all doing it together. Thank you so much. Thank you for this beautiful words. Thank you for for your service. Thank you for being here on this planet since its inception, assisting and supporting. Thank you for your beauty, your incredibly beautiful words that went straight into my heart. I love you. And we love you. Thank you for calling us forth to connect today. If you had, let's say, you could uh, give us people who are listening right now, if you could offer them a gift from your magical world, from your kingdom, <laughs> let's say we could like materialize in front of you, what would you, what would you give to us? Mm. I'm handing you this beautiful blooming pink lotus flower and you can take it and put it in your heart and know that it is always blooming that you are always blooming in that ever present stage of unfolding each petal one at a time I love it. <laughs> and when I sit down to connect to myself and quiet my mind, I often imagine my heart as a lotus flower. Uh, and every breath I take, I feel it blossoming. So it really <laughs> reminded me of what you, what you just said. <laughs> You're already so connected. It has been uh, such a pleasure to connect with you. Thank you so much for, for coming through. Of course. Likewise, we are so grateful. So until the next time, I send you the biggest hug in the world. They're showing me that they're like doing that back, but it's like many of them all together in a ring. <laughs> oh my god, that's so cute. <laughs>